This is my Salento. Sun kissed land, cradle in the arms of two seas. Red earth and ancient olive trees. True natural monuments with civil crowns shining in the sun. Living sculptures. Nodded. Twisting. Winding. Flowing. Bowing. Kneeling. Sliding. Tormented. Embracing. Set like jewels in dry stone walls. Imposing sentinels of wide plains. The poetry of the olive tree in harmony with its land. But what is happening to my Salento today? Dry and barren trees stand like ghosts, dying in valleys raising their arms toward the sky. It's a real environmental emergency, like nothing else in Europe. Today, our land is a global scientific laboratory, with scientists concentrating intensely in the hope of disarming the bacteria, because by now everyone knows that the principal factor of the disease called Codero, or in English Olive Quick Decline Syndrome, is a bacteria named Xylella fastidiosa. It's called a syndrome because the bacteria combines with other parasites like the leopard mouth and different types of wood infective fungi. So, everyone into the field to find out more! Our guide is Professor Francesco Porcelli, an entomologist at the University of Bari, ready to answer our questions and share with us what he knows about Xylella fastidiosa. But why is it called fastidiosa, which in Italian means annoying? Because it is difficult to cultivate and grows very, very slowly. It is a xylematic species adapted to live in the xylem of trees where there is lots of water and few nutrients. But what is xylem? Plants absorb water and minerals through their roots, which becomes the sap that rises to the leaves through the vessels of the xylem. Photosynthesis takes place in the leaves and the sap flows back down the plant through the flow and vessels. Do you see the bark here? It breaks off from that branch at the border between the phloem on the outside and the xylem on the inside. What happens when the bacteria invades the xylem vessels? It keeps growing until it blocks the passage of lymph through the tree's veins. The leaves and the branches above the point of blockage basically die of thirst. That explains the dead branches that spread out like spots on a leopard. How does the bacteria spread? It can only travel in xylem-sucking insects that feed on xylem. Like this one, for example, that belongs to the order of the Rincoti. What does the Latin word Rincoti mean? It means its mouth is a long snout, like an anteater, a needle that it sticks into the tree and sucks out its vital fluid. The Rincoti also have a kind of pump, a diaphragm pulled by powerful muscles that makes their faces bubble out. By pulling on the diaphragm, the Rincoti is sucking the sap from the tree's xylem. The insects prefer the tender branches of a tree, because if the wood is too hard, they can't puncture the tree. If the olive tree is infected, when the insects suck in the xylem, they also swallow bacteria cells. Let's go to work, friends! 
armed with nets to catch the xylem sucking insects. In an olive orchard, there are three main xylem insects. The so-called Milan leafhopper, Cercopis vulnerata, which is found mostly in the weeds growing at the edges of the orchard. Neophilenus campestris, mostly found also in weeds that infested the orchard. And Philenus fumarius, the meadow spittlebug, which can be found on the tender and succulent crowns on olive trees, suffering from olive quick decline syndrome. Laboratory and field testing has proven that a spittlebug transmits xylella fastidiosa from one olive tree to another. Here are electron microscope photos that show xylella inside the needle nose of the spittlebug. The insect vectors get the bacteria from a sick branch, then fly to another branch or another plant and pass the bacteria on. When this happens enough time, it can kill the branch or the plant. That's why pruning is so important. Of course. But the most important of all is to stop the insect vectors. What is the biological cycle of this type of insect? The spittlebug is very common, spread everywhere in Italy and throughout Europe. But in our Salento, its biological cycle seems different in important ways from the way it manifests in other parts of Italy. Because we have such mild winters, the eggs deposited on weeds starts to hatch early at the beginning of March. That's when the young larvae appear, and they're called spittlebugs, because they're covered with bubbles of what looks like spit. That is a mixture of excrement and glandular secretions mixed with air. This fourth guarantees the larvae a humid environment, and it protects them from predators. Beginning in February, the newborn larvae attach themselves to the weeds growing in and around the olive orchards and stay there surrounded by the bubbles where they grow until they're ready for metamorphosis. At the end of April or beginning of May, the adults appear. But here in our Salento, by May, the weeds are starting to dry out. So, the adults who need moisture to survive move up into the leafy crowns of the olive trees, which offer both humidity and tender branches to suck xylem from. At the end of August, the spatterbug return to the weeds when their new growth offers succulent food for them again. From October to December, every female lays three or four hundred eggs at the base of the weeds and at the edges of the olive orchards. Once scientists have learned the key points in the insect life cycle, they can determine the best ways to reduce the insect population and prevent the spread of xylella by combining the best agricultural, chemical and agronomic approaches. So, which are the key points in the insect life cycle? First, the nymphs inside the bubbles hiding in the weeds. Second, the appearance of the adults and their migration into the crowns of the olive trees. To control the nymphs in mid-April, we have to take measures to clear the ground of infesting weeds with a combination of plowing, cutting and burning. Naturally, this work is done mostly in the fields, but also along country roads and the irrigation canals where the weeds grow. In May and June, treatments have to be used to reduce the adult insect population. Some of these treatments are fully natural and have been used by farmers for many generations. In Salento, only the adult insect can transmit the bacteria, which they can only acquire from infected plants. With the elimination of infected branches or entire trees, following European Union guidelines, we can reduce the opportunities for infection. In the long term, this process can help restore health to an infected zone. The sacrifice of some plants can save thousands of trees that are many centuries old. How did the bacteria get here? Evidence shows that xylella was introduced only recently. DNA analysis revealed that the genome sequences of the bacteria in Salento are all the same so they must come from the same source. In Central America, where xylella has been present for a long time, there are many different strains of xylella, 
because the bacteria is capable of mutation in about 15 years. So, if we have only one strain, it means our axillella must be less than 15 years old. The first hotbeds of axillella were found around Gallipoli, Taviano and Alessio. Um, where did the bacteria come from? The same DNA analysis shows that our axillella genome sequence is exactly the same as the strain that infects oleander plants in Costa Rica. Considering that 42 million ornamental plants have been imported here from Costa Rica up today, it is very probable that the bacteria from Costa Rica found in Salento an ideal climate to establish and grow. Last October 13th, the Agricultural Department in the Netherlands communicated to the member countries of the European Union that it had intercepted xylella infected plants from Costa Rica. Globalization and air travel have made it much easier for organisms to travel from place to place, sometimes with damaging effects in native environments. Like the terrible red palm weevil that has killed almost all our palm trees. That's what might have happened here. That's another weak point in the system. We need to establish a quarantine center for all vegetable plants that are imported into Europe a collection point where all plants can be tested for disease before they can be sold in markets in Europe. And let's not forget the need to train and certify agricultural inspectors and vegetable plant growers. But why not intervene directly on the bacteria themselves, for example with antibiotics? It's unthinkable to use antibiotics in agriculture, First, because of the huge areas and numbers of plants that would have to be treated, and also because of the difficulty of injecting antibiotics into the xylem vessels, but also because of the terrible risk of causing the growth of mutation resistant to antibiotics. It's good to know that Xylella was first identified about 140 years ago in California, in grapevines, the United States invests millions and millions of dollars in research to fight the disease, which has caused grave socioeconomic consequences. The wine industry in California spends $100 million a year to save its crop from Xylella. So, do we have to resign ourselves? Isn't there anything we can do against the bacteria for now? We can only adapt to the crisis by preventing infections and taking steps to block the spread of xylella. One hopeful possibility is to introduce varieties of olive trees that are more resistant to the disease, such as celline and oliarole olives. And let's not forget the need to invest resources for research and experimentation on these and other current invaders, and to keep the dangerous ones out. It's our duty to take action, because our giant trees, which for centuries have withstood weather, drought and abandonment, symbols of peace and shared community throughout the Mediterranean, symbols of strength and connection to the land, deserve to be saved. We have a duty to do everything we can to stop the sun from setting forever on our olive trees.